Hello guys, it's Ian here. Today we'll do a kind of a different thing because uh, I wanted to do a challenge and the challenge will be try to teach as much as possible in 15 minutes. So it's a quarter teaching challenge, let's call it. The topic I'm picking up is obviously C sharp and we'll see whether it's possible to understand the very basics of uh, C sharp in just a quarter of an hour. Okay, so you will see that under 15 minutes I will show you just the very basic stuff that can set you in the motion when it comes to programming in C Sharp and uh, in Unity as well. And the basics you can use to create generally 80% of the code you will ever use. So the remaining 20% you will have to learn on your own or to use more profound sources. Of course, those kind of sources I will provide myself later on as well. Okay, but for the very beginning, the basic stuff uh, I will show you in this quarter teaching challenge. It will be just enough to do a lot of things. Trust me, a lot of things. Okay, so uh, he, we start with uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and we go and create a new project. So we go file new project. And in Visual C Sharp, we cre create a blank console app. Why console app? Because we don't want to dive into the details of how to use universal windows uh, or uh, WPF framework. We don't need that. Uh, it's uh, just needless. So let's stick to the console app. We create by pressing OK. And that's uh, generally we have already created our first program in C Sharp. So here we go. And let's talk uh, a bit about the structure of a program in C Sharp. The, the words that are in blue are keywords, okay? And the using keyword means that we are implementing, we are importing some library. Here we are importing the system library, which will enable us to use some functions, like, like for example, console write line. And this, uh, this particular line of code will show us this sign hello world on the screen. To run the application, we go debug and start debugging, or we can press green play button. But uh, when we are debugging, this program will terminate itself after it's launched because there is no line that says do not terminate the program, okay? So it will terminate itself. So we have to go always start without debugging or use the shortcut control plus F5 just to make the program stop at the end of the execution. Okay, so we can see that it printed hello world and that's it. It finished its execution and show us the, the statement press any key to come. After we have imported some libraries, we got our name. So inside the curly brackets of the names is called console app two. We have a set of classes that are combined into one project, let's say. Okay, so do not, let's not dive into those boring details of namespaces. So we have a class. What's a class? Class is uh, an object which is uh, a kind of one particular module of uh, application we are running, okay? So I guess this definition is uh, enough. Right now in our program, program we have a, a method and the method is called main. It's a type of static and void. Void means it returns no value. And static, it means that, well, we'll... So when we want to put our code, generally, we always have to have this uh, main method. Doesn't matter if it's C Sharp or if it's uh, Java uh, or if it's uh, C++, many languages use the main method inside the main class of the application. Right now, let's look at some variable types. What's a variable? Variable, let's imagine that it's a kind of a box that's holding a value, okay? So we have some values like for example, five, when we want to know how many books uh, we have, how many, we have five books. So let's say we want to uh, create a variable called books and we will write int books and we'll, it, we will assign the value of five to this variable. So first we need to put a keyword which will tell our program what type of value we are looking at. So this variable called books is an int variable uh, which stands for integer. Integer means it's countable, so we can count it, okay? So it's like 5, it can be 10, 
if we want to to say uh, with some kind of precision after the decimal point, we have to use float, then we can go 1.1, or we can use uh, double, double b equals 1.1. And the difference between float and double is the precision. So the double can have uh, precision up to, I believe, 14 points and float about seven. Then other variables we, we want to, to uh, know about is a char, which stands for a character. Uh, here we have to put it in the single quote. Remember, it's a single quote. It's a single uh, apostrophe. And uh, we have as well a string, a set of characters. So we can put a whole statement here. Remember to always finish the line with a semicolon. Otherwise you will receive errors. So now that we have some variables and values assigned to them, let's say that uh, we displayed hello world. Then we type a plus sign and we put D, just the name of the variable D, which stands for this, uh, this gibberish. Okay, so when we run, the application will see that we are displaying hello world exclamation mark and the gibberish. When it comes to basic input, we can input only characters in the console or whole strings. And how to do this? So let's have a character input. And then we go console, read, and then we can read either one character that's put into the input stream or whole line. Okay, let's go uh, input re uh, read line. And we are now reading the line, but we are doing nothing with it, okay? So we have to store the variable here. So let's put string D. So we'll assign, first we'll show this value, this gibberish value, then we'll assign a new value that we have already read. And then let's output the value we have provided once again. So we get hello world gibberish, then we have to input some value like hello. And then the value is repeated. So let's go now to a very basic and very useful statement, if statement. It goes like this, if, and there is uh, some condition in the uh, round brackets. Let's say D equals to hello. So we want to check if the line we have provided, uh, let's check whether the line we have provided, if it equals to hello to the string. And if so, let's write, how are you? Okay. But uh, if statements are great because we can chain them, we can go else if and put yet another statement if it's high. Okay, so we can have we can make a decision tree that has multiple branches. We can go with else, which stands for every other option instead of hello and hi. So if the D equals to something other, let's go with I don't understand. And let's run it. Okay, so it goes hello world, we go hi, and it replies with how are you but if we went with hello world and go yo it says i don't understand and that's how if statements now let's go with loops so uh, in when it comes to loops i want to show you a cool thing if we want to for example do something several times it's easier to use a loop than to produce the same piece of code time and time again we want to calculate squares of first 10 integers from 1 to 10. So we could go console write line. First of all, we need an integer called number. number. If we didn't use the loop, we'd have to do it this way. So we write number times number and then go number equals to number plus 1. So we are increasing the value of number, which is one, by one, so it, it is two, and we assign this two to the number, okay? And we have to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. But it's gibberish, it's overusing the same line of code, which is bad practice. A good practice would be to make a loop 
And how do we make a loop? So we go for, we press tab button twice, and we have already established a loop. So we'll iterate over ammo that's specified as length, and we want to, to do it 10 times, so we put 10. And it will go from 0 up to 10, which will be 11 times, but the, the last time when the i is uh, equal to 10, it will be less. It won't be less, so it won't be executed, so it's still uh, being executed 10 times, provided it starts with 0. So remember, uh, use default uh, loop and then put the number of times you want to it to iterate. And then we put it like this. So we go number times number, and then we increase the number. And then we run, and we say loop, loop. And we see that we received first 10 squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on, okay? So that's a loop. We have got yet another loop, which is called while, and the difference is uh, that it goes on and on until the statement here becomes a false. So we should go until number is less than 11 or 10. But then it will go uh, 9 times because from 1 to 9 and uh, we want from 1 to 10 so we, we have to do it like this. We put the same code inside and there will be no difference as, as you can see. So we run the code, we go loop, and it's still looping 10 times. Then it checks that the statement here is false because the number is not less than 11 because it's equal to 11 the last time. So it goes 10 times 10, then 10 or the number equals to 10 plus 1, so 11. And the statement is not equal, uh, the statement is false, it's not true, and the while loop is finished. So those are loops. But let's put this one as a method because we are now repeating those lines here and we want to put them somewhere else. So let's collapse this main method for, for a moment and let's make a new one and we call it int square. It's giving us an error because we have to return something. Okay, So let's go put return 0 for the time being. Okay, so now it's uh, it's fine. So int before the name of the method means that this method will return an integer, okay? In these round brackets, we type whatever we want to provide the function with at the beginning. And we want to give it, give it an integer called number. And in the method, we want to calculate the number as a number times a number, okay? And now that we have calculated the square of a number, we want to return it. And we also have to put a static keyword in front of the method to let the program see this without any further modification. Now we return to our while loop and we go in this right line, console.right line, we go square and in the brackets, in the round bracket, we always have to put round brackets after the method. We type the number we want to give this function and we just type number. We give it a number called number. So we give it this variable and in return, a value of square will be calculated, returned and put here. So let's see how it works. We go loop and it works just fine just as as it did previously. Okay, so right now we have covered quite a large amount of knowledge just in this uh, short period of time. There's one more thing because C Sharp is uh, just as many more languages like C++, it's an object oriented language, which means that we are using objects quite a lot. And the point of using an object is to provide better functionality and better organization of the code. So let's uh, just stick to this uh, very trivial and basic uh, definition. And when it comes to object, there are a few objects we have already used. For example, a string is an object because char variable, 
uh, can store only one character, okay? But if we want to store several characters, we have to combine char variables into a complex variable called string. And as a matter of fact, when we have got the string D, so we have read the line and we are comparing it, we can do several things with the, the with this variable. So let's delete the while loop. And as we can see, when we type these, and we can see that there are many, many methods we can use, we can check the length. So how many characters are in the string object? We can go and change all the characters to a lowercase. So there are many things we can do with objects. In order to do stuff with an object, we have to have a class and we have to have some kind of a function. So we could create a new class, call it example. And now we could create our new object of the type of example. And that's, that's it. Let's say that this example has a name. So let's go public string name. And now that we have provided us with the example object, now we can obtain the name of the example. We can change it, for example, to our. In order to use the, ex the, the object of a new class we have just implemented, we have to first, we have to initialize with this kind of line of code. We say that example, or let's say that uh, IE, that IE is a new object of a class example and that's that's what it says. It's a new type of an example. It's a new object. It's just a brand new object. And then we change the name for our example. But what's great with classes and objects is that we can create yet another. So that's generally how the stuff is used. We can, of course, print it. We go with ea.name if we call name. Go name and we receive our example. That was the very beginning that was the very basics. But as a matter of fact, if you look at uh, my other tutorials on uh, coding and on programming, you will see that generally I'm using just those very few things I've shown you in this video. Okay, so thanks for watching. As it goes with challenges, I want to nominate Hi guys, it's Eleonora and today I'm going to show you how I use the post-processing package in Unity to add a little bit more life to a scene. I want to nominate Eleonora. Alright, so hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be... I'd like to nominate Claimy. Claimy. Clammy. Claimy. And... Welcome back everyone to Blackthorn Prod. Okay guys, and as well I would like to nominate, let's go, Blackthorn Prod. And I mean Noah Kalis. So yeah, that's uh, that's my nominations for the teach in fifteen minutes teaching quarter teaching quarter challenge. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers.